to it. I ain't going to have y'all on live for three hours. <laughs> um, no, he's trying to talk. He doesn't talk just yet. So the reason why I said, you know what, let me just go ahead and do this live tonight is because there have been a lot of talk going on. And everybody heard after episode two, what Giselle said about the rumors, which what she said wasn't even the rumor. Um, clearly, the fact that I said it was so disgusting and so nasty that I did not want to repeat it. And that was that was real. It was very real. So I have a former friend who thought it was more important for her to try to make a place and position herself on this show than to be a friend. And a lot of signs were there. You know how you sometimes have those friends where the signs are there, but you just kind of ignore them because you've known them for so long and you just, you want to see them how you want to see them. Well, one thing that my husband has been telling me is from his own experience when he first made it to the NFL, um, you lose a lot of friends when you start to elevate or if you start to do something that's new or different. And that started happening to me. And it definitely was just like, it was very hurtful. Um, I just decided to just like cut the friend off. And at that moment, things really started getting out of hand. This former friend started reaching out to production, um, spreading lies and basically saying, I'm going to just read to you some of the stuff that she wrote on her pages. So just so y'all can see all of these papers y'all see over here, all of that, those are statements from people that she reached out to from production to cast to my own friends and family. Like that's how crazy she is. So she reached out to these people trying to get them to believe whatever story she was telling and nobody would believe it. So the next best thing that she could do was to start going to cast members who she thought were thirsty enough to listen to the story and whoever she thought that she could manipulate. So when she did those things and I started finding out about what she was doing because she was telling my own good friends who she met through us about all of this stuff that she was planning to do. <laughs> so this is what she said about me. Now, y'all know I had a miscarriage. Um, oh, God. When was that? That was in 2017. So I had a miscarriage. This is what she says on one of her posts. She says, when people have abortions and call it a miscarriage, yeah, you miscarried your legs one in front of the other all the way to the slaughterhouse. She sent this message to one of the producers. Then she apologizes and says, I'm sorry, I was having a moment. When he finally responds, he's like, what the F? I'm in complete shock. She said Monique has adapted a reputation amongst her friends that if you can't do something for her, you're disposable. Not cool. I've wished nothing but the best for her. He said, that doesn't even sound like her. She loves you. She's been distanced for a while unless she's filming. You know what? You never really know a person till they get a little coin. But me, honey, I will expose all frauds. That miscarriage BS she's parading around and some is some publicity BS. That girl didn't even want that baby. I think she had an abortion. It's actually kind of pissing me off. And he said, oh my God, no way. Monique seemed so genuinely upset about that. No, babe, ask for receipt. Oh, shoot, my phone started. Dang, where did, where did I leave off, y'all? No, I just started them and I, oh, okay. I think they got that part. Okay, so, she's, so he said, oh my God, no way. Monique seemed to be genuinely upset about that. No, babe, ask for receipts. I bet she won't and can't give you any. So she's telling my producer to ask for receipts that I had a miscarriage. I guess my husband witnessing the actual miscarriage wasn't enough of a receipt and me having to go to the doctor wasn't enough of a receipt. So that's where it started. She then starts reaching out to, let me pull it up, to cast members. I don't know how she got Candace's number, but she sends Candace a text message and basically says, can you pass my number on to Sharice? She wanted Sharice's number because she knew me and Sharice had fallen out. So I guess she thought that would be her easy end. Also, she knew that Sharice was trying to get back on the show. So she's trying to team up with Sharice. She reaches out to Candace and she's 
talking all this stuff to Candace, and she's like, you know, she wants to talk to her on the phone. Candace then proceeds to talk to her on the phone for two hours as she rants and starts saying whatever it is that she's saying. Later on down the line, once she finds out that I was pregnant, she then starts saying that I was cheating on Chris and that the baby wasn't Chris's. All of this while I'm having a high-risk pregnancy. I had to stop working out because I almost lost my baby. Chase, I almost lost him at eight weeks pregnant. And I've said this before. People already know this. I was eight weeks. My doctor sent me in for early ultrasound because I had a miscarriage. So he wanted to check and make sure things were okay. Lo and behold, the, the sack was tearing on both sides. So he put me on a high-risk um, bed rest for eight weeks. So I couldn't do anything. He told me not even to lift my babies. He said, you can't have sex. You can't do anything. Mm. You know. <laughs> so I couldn't do anything. So, and then the pregnancy was pretty difficult. Now we're going into the uh, filming season. Going into the filming season, right before we start filming, Karen calls me. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe Giselle. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Wait, am I, am I going out of order? What are you talking about? Did I know about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this happened before we started filming season four. Yeah. Okay. So she's like, oh, my God, I can't believe Giselle. And I'm like, what? And she says she's... No, that was after. I'm mixing up two time periods. Okay. Let me back up. Yeah, I'm thinking about the following year after Andy's baby shower. So prior to Andy's baby shower, I was pregnant. The rumors were circulating from Gigi... uh, the former friend, I just said her name. I didn't even want to say her name. It's like demonic saying her name. Okay, former friend goes to G, um, goes to Sharice. Then she ends up um, gathering up whatever little circle. Sharice starts spreading the message to the whole group. Candace knew about all of this because she asked her for Sharice's number. And she gave it to her. <laughs> so the fact that she didn't understand how me and Sharice weren't clicking is absolute BS. So anyway, we going into the filming season. Um, they wanted to bring all of this to the show. And one thing y'all know about me is that I don't play when it comes to my family. You can say whatever you want about me, but you're not going to involve my kids, my husband. That's where I draw the line. I was almost like this for season four. I was about to not even come back because I was a high risk pregnancy and I was like, I don't want to be around that negative energy and I'm carrying a baby. Like, I don't even want to do it. So everything was like, production didn't want to touch it. They were like, this is disgusting for her to even try to spread these rumors. This is nasty. They didn't want to even deal with it. They was like completely disgusting. But you had a few women on the show who wanted to bring it to camera. They were like, yeah, we're going to take her down and we're going to expose and put all of this stuff out there. They wanted to bring this nonsense to the show we go the whole season candace brought up the former friend's name twice while we were filming and i'm just looking at her like wow like really giselle brings her up none of that ever aired wasn't surprised when giselle did it i mean we're not friends and i already know she's hateful and miserable so we go the whole season season's done now comes the baby now comes andy's baby shower They all get together. It was Candace, uh, Giselle, Robin, and a few other people. They all get together, and they have this dinner after the shower, and they begin to plot on me. So apparently, Giselle starts saying that she's going to bring this to reunion, and I'm going to tell people that Chase isn't Chris's. And... Whoever was at the dinner was basically like, well, that's not going to fly. Then Candace spoke up and said, Chase looks just like Chris. Like, nobody's going to believe that. So they had to go from a different angle, I guess. So I didn't even know about any of this until Karen called me. Karen calls me and she said, I can't believe Giselle. And I'm like, what happened? So she's like, what do you mean what happened? All the stuff she was saying about you. And I was like, what was she saying about me? What are you talking about? She's like, wait, Candace didn't call you? I said, I have not heard from Candace. I said, honestly, Karen, Candace and I don't talk like that. I was like, we talk when we're filming. I said, but when it's off season, the only time we talk is if I reach out to her. 
So Karen was like, I cannot believe she told she didn't call and tell you. I'm like, can you please just tell me what you're talking about? She said, yeah, so Giselle is planning to go to reunion and to tell people at like during the reunion that Chase isn't Chris's and that you were cheating on him and, and that's not his baby. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, how disgusting is it, number one? Like I said, you can say whatever you want to say about me, but to talk about my child? Now, if somebody talked about any one of Giselle's daughters or even the illegitimates from her ex, she will go berserk. So to bring up my child's name, when you know the mess ain't true, how low down and disgusting is that? So now we have two situations going on here. We got Karen telling me what she's telling me. Nobody else is saying anything to me. So I'm just like, okay, well, we, we could just go and ride this out and see what happens. Candace never came to me with it. She never told me until we were about to start filming season five. So this is coming into season five. Candace only told me because I asked her about it. And I said, what was about this dinner, this, that, the other? And then she proceeds to tell me the same thing that Karen says. But she left out her part in the conversation. So apparently she was actually cheerleading the whole conversation because she had talked to the former friend. So she's cheerleading and doing all of this stuff. So I'm finding out bits and pieces as we go along. And before anybody else asks and says anything about the whole fight, this whole situation had nothing to do with the fight. Absolutely not. One thing that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to talk about people's kids and I'm not going to spread lies and rumors. The only time I ever talked any type of nonsense on this show that was gossipy was about Sherman. But guess what? That wasn't a lie. That actually happened. And I apologize for bringing that even to the forefront because it had happened so long ago. But one thing I will not do is tell lies on people. I will not sit back and try to destroy somebody's family. And I just don't play that. And I don't appreciate that people running around here protesting, talk about Black Lives Matter, but they sitting here trying to destroy a whole black family off of some reality TV entertainment BS because they have nothing else to talk about. So you want to keep coming after me. So when people keep saying, oh, Monique needs self-control and she's this and she's that, at the end of the day, you get to a point where you're fed up. Now, what y'all need to understand is that I spent two years, two years, it's been two years since they tried to start all this stuff. And I have had to be professional and work with these heifers. <laughs> And still show up and put a smile on my face. So when y'all sit back and y'all saying, oh, you forgave Giselle for what she did. No, I never forgave anything. She never brought it to me. So it just, it was left as it was. And I never forgave that. I had to be a professional and show up and do my job. And that's what I did. Now, the problem that I have with Candace is Candace was showing me a friendly face. But then she was doing some real shady crap behind my back. So now I'm confused and I'm like, wait, if Giselle's doing this crap, I get it. I don't fool with her. She's not my friend. I'm expecting for a person who says they're my friend, who we just patched up and said, look, we're going to do better by each other. We're going to look out. I'm expecting for that friend to consider me the same way I would consider them. And that didn't happen. So that's the problem that I have with her. And while she's sitting here on live saying my child's name, which she should not be doing, but she's a child herself. So God mm -hmm. forgive her while she's out here trying to clean, clean up her mess. She's throwing everybody else under the bus. And she finally actually further clarified some of the things that I had been hearing that I didn't even know were completely true. So you got Candace out here throwing crap, hiding her hand. You got Sharice out here throwing crap, hiding her hand. Now, no, Sharice didn't start the rumor, but she definitely contributed. And I know for a fact, her, the former friend, and another chick were literally on the phone at nights having three-way conversations. And they were literally plotting. How disgusting. How nasty. When you are a woman who, have, who has been through divorce, who has dealt with infidelity with your own husband, and, and from what Giselle says, with yourself, with the fireman. Like, what the heck? And the thing that sucks the most about it is that they all know that it's some made up BS. Now, for, I'm going to address something about Ashley right now. So while y'all sitting back and y'all saying, oh, you didn't do this with Ashley and you moved on with Ashley. Well, guess what Ashley did? 
Ashley, once we made up, Ashley told me about everything that was going on. She wasn't at the dinner and she did not want to play any parts in what was going on. And every time that a camera was in her face and she was expected to start speaking on these nasty rumors, Ashley and Michael shut the crap down. And they said, we are absolutely not talking about Monique, Chris, their children, or anything else. And they shut it down. And every time she shut it down, she then called me and gave me a heads up as to what was going on. So while y'all sitting here talking about Ashley, Ashley has been more of a friend to me than Candace on a rainy day. So what else y'all need to know? <laughs> So a lot of stuff be going on behind the scene. And at the end of the day, the hate is very real. And I've been saying this and I've been trying to be the bigger person. I've been trying to just like do my part and then take my tail home. But at the point where you start trying to destroy my family and my marriage with some BS and they need to check the credibility of the person who they're getting this information from. And you know what's crazy? If they had facts and like real stuff, I can't be mad at them. But at the end of the day, they knew it was bogus. They knew it was a lie and literally have no information to back anything up. One thing that I've been, I stay out of the, the women drama. I mean, that's their show. That's their gig. It is what it is. I try to stay out of that. But at the point when people are putting my kids in their mouth and talking about my babies, my little boy ain't even two years old yet. Just getting introduced to the world. All right. He don't even know what's going on. And you got grown people out here plotting to damage my family and my kids. Now I don't appreciate it. It's a lot of ugly mess going on with a lot of these people on this show that I know about. There's nasty rumors Na and there's no, nasty no, truths. You no, know, it's some fact stuff that I've right. seen with my own eyes. But you know what? I respect people's families. So some of these people out here running their mouth, they really need to pump their brakes before I get like the dude on Why Did I Get Married and say, <laughs> y'all want to tell it? Let's tell oh, it all. When she started going on everybody. Yeah, no, he went on everybody. And <laughs> no, I her. It was the wife. No, you, no but oh, initially oh, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he sure baby. did. But at the end of the day. Because she was like, at the end, she said, boom. <laughs> yeah, she had her technique too. But what I'm saying is, that ain't my character to be, you know, going after people, going after their family. This is the women's thing. And I respect that. All right. All of the stuff that Monique has been attacked on, and Monique has threw jabs back. It is what it is. That's their fight. I can but, do fun but, shade all day. No doubt. But when I can you call bring somebody, my babies in, right. like that's fire. And y'all some dirty tricks. I don't fool with y'all. I'm not going to play this game and roll with this show and act like everything is hunky dory. I wish I could turn into Bruce Jenner and slap the shit out of all of y'all <laughs> right now. Because that's fire. That's a baby. All right. And y'all got babies. And I respect y'all families. And I respect y'all babies. Y'all some dirty people. And I don't appreciate it. I, I really don't. I'm pissed off right now. Bringing my baby in it, putting my baby in your mouth. Like, y'all lucky that I'm a man because I will stump the shit out of y'all. Mm. And he used to do that for a living, so mm. I wouldn't try. I, I would never disrespect y'all family. But if y'all keep taking the gloves out with me, I'm telling you, I'm going to take them all back. Yeah. And that ain't no threat. That's just reality because fair is fair. We've always respected, even with some of the stuff that I know for a fact to we be We know true, a lot of stuff. That could damage people's family, but right. I would never and even do in that this to y'all. Even in this moment, I'm not even going to speak on it. No, because I'm not going to do to that. them what they're trying to do to us. And, and honestly, me and Chris and our kids and our bird have <laughs> enough going on in this house where we can entertain for days without having to throw somebody under the bus. That's or, fine, you man. know. I don't appreciate it. So... It ain't going to be good for me with, with dealing with these folks. And after wrong. all of this, now that I really know, and I heard it out of the people's mouths and everybody, everybody quiet now, you know, um, now that I really know the whole picture, you really think these tricks going to be up in my house ever again? Karen and Ashley are about the only two people that are welcome here at this point. Wendy get a pass because I don't really know her like that. And, you know, she's new. We'll see. We got to finish watching the episodes to see what happened. But, um, so yeah, like, how do you how do you move forward from here? Oh God! When all of this has been put out, and all of this is now on public display, and now everybody knows the front story and the back story and the side story. Now y'all know all the BS, and I'll, only because I'm literally I'm like okay. 
I'm grateful for this platform on this show. Um, even even the network has boundaries. You know, even they were like turned off and disgusted Which by this whole mess. That. So I respect that. that and that's why I, I kept showing up and doing my job. But at this point, do y'all really think, why would I want to be around that? Why would I welcome that into my house? I need to go get some sage already. So where do you go from here? What would y'all do? Somebody say what are the rumors? You should have been on that 10. <laughs> so that's that. And the only reason I even felt the need to address it is because I said out of my own mouth on the episodes that the, hey, Tiff, that's my cousin, Tiffany. Tiffany, you are pregnant. You need to stop. You're going to be out here sounding like me, season four, dragging people pregnant and all. <laughs> um, dang, I don't lost my train of thought. Um, shoot. All right, I'll just read some more. I can't remember what I was about to say. I don't know. so much. Um, but yeah, the reason I have collected all of this Oh, and get this. This is what's funny. Okay, so I got a statement from one of my friends who the former friend reached out to. And she tried to say that Sharice is the one that started the rumors. Sharice told her that there was a rumor that you were it's pregnant. Funny. It's funny. Why does my screen keep going dim? Sharice, this is coming from the former friend who started the rumors. She's throwing it on Sharice. Sharice told her that there was rumors that you were pregnant. With someone else's child. And she said that she talked to some of the former, some of the friends from the show. And, um, wait. She also said that producers had reached out to her to come on the show, but she hadn't decided what she was going to do. Now, we all know that's a darn lie. Because I have text message after screenshots of DMs of her reaching out to producers. I have packets. Literally, packets. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And all the producers were so turned off that they told me exactly what the deal was. She's reaching out to the press, trying to get on the show, and thought that that dirty mess and lies would win her a spot. And it's very hurtful, too, because when we down for somebody, we down for somebody. We love them as a family. And to get dogged out like this and betrayed like this, to start something just to get on TV, it, it's fine. It's very hurtful. Very hurtful. It just really, it, it just, it, it destroys the dynamic of the show, even as a viewer watching, because it's like, we watch Housewives to be entertained. We don't watch it to see people's families and lives destroyed over some BS. So, I hope it was worth it. Coming around as an extra for free, unmiked. So, and then, and as far as the whole Giselle situation and, oh, you were friends with shit, I was doing my job. I was doing my job. And I even said when I sat down to lunch that I always think negative of you when I hear your name. I had a whole moment and kept it all the way real. I don't trust you. I was about to cancel this lunch. Uh, I really didn't want to come, did not want to do it, but I said, you know what? I'm a person who I'm, I'm, when it comes to being professional, I am on time. I do my job. I do what I'm contracted to do. So, but I knew, I knew I was like, this is a setup. Why all of a sudden is she trying to be cool with me? And then all of a sudden you see Sharice popping up in scenes and all of that. And she wasn't brought by production. She only came when she was invited to come by whoever was having an event. So that's why when y'all saw episode two, when Giselle said your friend invited, that shock on my face was genuine shock. I had no idea. I assumed that she was invited by either Giselle or Robin. 100%. Didn't even think for one minute that Candace invited her. <laughs> That's how sold I was. I was like, nah, nah, Candace would have told me. Nope. So. How does Chris feel about the big boy comment? 
I'll let Chris answer that. First off, it pisses me off because she addresses everybody else that's a male on the show by their name. And Except you, for when she calling Ray Karen Uncle husband, ben. Yeah. Ray, Uncle Ben, which is disrespectful. Right, but but the whole thing is, it's not meant to be fine shade for the TV show. It's very belittling. Um, and Monique and Giselle, they stay at each other's throat. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, don't attack me just to get under Monique's skin. All right? And black men then been through so much in this nation by being called a boy. And for a, a, another black person to try to belittle them and put them down, it's very disrespectful. I don't appreciate it. And it's not just a little fun shade. It's very disrespectful. And I can see right through the BS. It's and I'm not play- Right. And I'm not playing the games with that, you know. And I don't want to attack, you know, who she's dating. I don't want to attack anything dealing with her family. But at the end of the day, you know, she's the one attacking first. I've never had a problem with Giselle outside of anything else other than, you know, I had a problem with some of the stuff that she's been doing to my wife. But other than that, I let it be. That's a show. They go at it. It is what it is. And I respect that. But at the end of the day, why are you coming at me? I don't come at what she got going on and that mess she got. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't appreciate the big boy comments. It's very belittling and dogging me out. And that's what black men had to struggle with for so many years. And for another black person to do it, it's pretty bad. But then black lives matter. Yeah, right. Hmm. Hmm. People run around here promoting black because it's popular right now. Ain't nobody buying that. It all started because y'all got four homes. <laughs> y'all so I know, you should have told him you had one home. And, well, then, and maybe she would have been cool. She still would have been mad. So, um, I'm trying to remember, is there anything else? Because I, I was reading some of the comments. People had questions. So I hope I answered all of them. Um, what's up, Freeish Media? Monique, do you shave your face? It looks so smooth. <laughs> no, I, Mike, I, uh, what's it called? Uh, exfoliate. I exfoliate. <laughs> well, and and one, one thing I want to say, y'all know me. You know, I go on the show, I cut up. You know, I might make little jokes about sex and different things like that. Mm. But you never really see me on live. Hell, I don't even know how to work half of this stuff y'all got going on. <laughs> and, no, I really don't. That's true. You know, no, I don't. I, that's I mean, not I my thing. I'm, I'm all about football. You know, I watch football film and watch football. That's mm-hmm. my gig. And I let Monique do her job. She's very professional. And some of the other women are as well. But y'all don't know y'all don't know me to be on live all the time talking about stuff like this, getting involved. But at the end of the day, you're attacking my wife's character. And when you know it was a lie made up just to hurt her so somebody can elevate themselves. Right. And and then, and, and hold on, babe. And sorry. then attacking my children, like that's the lowest of the low. You are despicable people to sit around and plot and do that to my family. That's wrong because I've never done that. Other people have kids and I know true situations that I've seen and I've never once brought that to light to try to damage somebody's family or their relationship or embarrass their kids or their wives or husbands or anything on TV. If anything, I protect them because at the end of the day, that's what we need to be doing more protecting. Have fun, cut up on TV, but we need to protect. It ain't about no money. All right. And it ain't about no fame. You know, people trying to bury each other with damaging lies is wrong. Even when I know factual stuff, I've never tried to bury anybody on this show. And bringing up my baby is going to get somebody ass kicked. I'm just telling you straight up. That's fighting words, like for real. No, it's getting the ass kicked words. Because there ain't going to be no fight with me. I'm telling you, don't, don't, you ain't got to do all I'm just being honest. That's fire. I've always respected y'all families. That's some bullshit, and I don't like it. So when people like, I know people be like, oh, Monique is always the victim. Listen, I'm no victim. If I do something, I have no problem owning up to my crap and then apologizing. Y'all have seen that a million times on this show. Y'all don't see any apologies coming my way, though. Um, Most of the time is spent with me defending myself. It's like every little thing I do, here they come nitpicking it. So that gets annoying. And that's why you see me out of nowhere just like lash out or start throwing like shade or whatever. And then everybody's like, wait, where'd that come from? Monique's being extra. No, y'all don't know the whole picture. So, you know, it's time out for the BS. It is what it is. And I'm just, I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. 
So there's a way to be entertaining and there's a way to fight fair and all of that good stuff. But at some point you keep poking the bear, that bear going to meet you. And when it comes to y'all to see the whole incident, um, this situation has nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. I meet energy. So when people keep asking, why didn't you drag this Giselle? Why didn't you drag Ashley? They didn't meet me with that type of energy. So words are exchanged back and forth. I can take Giselle and her wrinkled neck all day long. We can go back and forth. Me and Ashley had our moment. We patched things up. We've moved forward and it's been all good ever since. So that's why. They've never tried to get in my face and fight me. So. All right. All right. What 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 other questions do y'all have? Y'all y'all clowning. So, oh, let me also say this. This has been going on for 2 years now. So, I can be calm now. Because you should have saw me two years ago. And I had to not only hold on to that and carry that, but then film a whole season and also do it pregnant. And then I I filmed a whole lot and they just showed me pregnant laying around. And what's, <laughs> no, but, no, but what's sad is they literally tried to put this information out while you were pregnant. Yeah. And it was a high risk pregnancy and everybody knew it. I oh. kept overheating. Oh my God. There were times they had, I, y'all saw me when I had popsicles all the time. I kept overheating so bad. Like it literally felt like my whole insides were on fire when I was pregnant. That was, Chase was the roughest pregnancy. Um, and I guess they say the more pregnancies and the older you get, you know, it gets harder and harder, but he was, oh my goodness. It was so hard to function. I did a whole live podcast three weeks before I gave birth to him. It was like, like business as usual in the Samuels house, you know, like I was still grinding pregnant and, and, and everything. And, and then still having the like fight tricks, like <laughs> pregnant, arguing with people. So it's exhausting y'all. It's exhausting. But, um, yeah, I mean, if y'all got any questions, I'm not stop. Not for lazy moms. I was packing up orders and stuff today and then doing press. And then I got the kids. Thank God my husband is a hands-on dad. Um, did Robin participate? She was at the plotting dinner. <laughs> I don't know. know I don't know yeah, to don't what know. extent. Um, see, none of them have ever come to me and talked about the whole situation. They just kind of kept it hush hush, and they're not my friends for me to just like come to them and say, "Hey, this is no, what's been going it was on." That's because supposed to be an ambush. Yeah, it was. They so this whole plan. I was never supposed to find out about this. This was supposed to have went down like long time ago, and I wasn't supposed to find out. But because former friend started running her mouth to my actual friends and telling them all of the plans, of course they're gonna come and call and tell me. The amount of energy that it takes to do what they're doing. Oh, Lord. I don't want any of that bad energy. They can keep all of that. And y'all know what karma does. So. Misery loves company. Would you ever launch Not For Lazy Dads? I actually uh, brought that domain name. <laughs> we need to because, hell, I've been yeah. working around here. <laughs> but you know, you yeah, know what's, you I, know what's I so funny, to. though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, baby, I cut you off. But yeah. what's so funny is if you track all of the people, all right, at least most of them, that kind of put all of this stuff together and trying to do this to our family, evaluate their relationship. Divorce, bitter. Evaluate what hurt, they got going on. Miserable. And, 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 and that ain't for me to really be jabbing at people like that. That ain't me. But I'm just being 100 right now. At the end of the day, Everybody that's sitting around plotting, look what they've been through. I actually feel sorry for a lot of these people, you know? And I'm not saying we're perfect here. We, go, we got marriage counseling now that we, we do. Listen, 
it's not a, not for this bullshit. Right. But we got marriage counseling. It's a must. Just like from we, communication and getting along and trying to figure things out. Exactly. So we ain't perfect by a long shot. We definitely have our issues. But for somebody to make up issues and put on us, right. because they probably miserable or their marriages failed or they got struggles going on. If anything, we uplift them and try to encourage them. Now, when you start taking shots, of course, shots will be fired back. So let's just keep that real. Yes. Um, somebody said something. Oh, somebody said, could I ever forgive Candace? I'm done with that one. And the reason why is because... You can forgive, but don't forget, baby. You got to forgive. No, I get it. I get it. You know, I get it. I'm done <laughs> with that one. And... Well, we got to go to heaven, baby. I want to go to heaven because <laughs> that clearly is a demon. <laughs> that clearly is a demon. We got to go to heaven. Look, I will rebuke her. That's what I will do. I will rebuke her in the name of Jesus. Um, I will forgive but, everybody for all of this mess. But at the end of the day, I will never trust you. I don't want to be around you. I'm not going to pretend and play these games this with is, you. It, when you when you put my little baby's name in your mouth, I was like you talking. screwed up. I know. Let me smoke. <laughs> I'm pissed, man. For real. This ain't cool with me. No, I know, baby. This ain't meant just no entertainment shit for the people. Uh, trust me. I know. I know. I know. No, but what I was saying was, this is my thing. Y'all have barely heard me speak on the whole fight incident from the time it happened up until when the trailer was released. I've been quiet. I wrote my little song so I can get everything off my chest. And I did things my own way. My husband told me to keep your mouth shut. Don't even feed into it. I listened to my husband. I listened to myself. And I left it alone. This demonic person has said some nasty things about me. She's been going so in all the time. And I'm like, for what? It is what it is. So I just... I, I don't get, get that. that. I, 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 I wouldn't just, get I that too much energy, Jamal. I'm really, not. I'm really, just saying, really, like, really. the stuff that people have been screenshotting and messaging me and showing me the things that she's been saying about me, it's like, why are you still talking about me? Why is my name still even in your mouth? Unless you're doing press and asked about the show, why are you just spending so much time talking about me? I don't, I don't understand. So my whole thing is, I'm just a person where, like Tupac said, just because, you know... You, you lost the a friend. Line, line I'm getting it. <laughs> just because you lost a friend does not mean you gained an enemy. If I'm done with you, I'm just I'm done. Leave it alone and walk away. And that's what I've been trying to do. So Yeah. It's what it is. Um so yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much the gist of it. Um so now y'all know why I basically was like, I don't want to talk about it. You got somebody running around here calling my miscarriage an abortion? That's dirty. And to even think of that as a rumor or a lie to start, just lets me know that you did that mess before. That was somebody speaking from experience with that one. No, Karen was not a part of any of this. Karen was out of the nonsense. And Karen was the only person that was really like gotcha reporting back. back and having my back. Yeah. Once me and Ashley mended things, then Ashley was having my back as well. But she is cool with a lot of those women. So she's in a pretty tight predicament. But from what I know, she um, had my back so and still has my back. I just talked to Ashley earlier today. And, um, and I've even been talking to Ashley and just getting advice from her because she's gone through things where people have been constantly attacking her marriage. So I was just like, girl, how do you deal with that? Like, that's insane. And I'm just a person who just believes that you need to leave people's marriages alone. Like, why is that your business? Even Crazy. when they went through what they went through, you ain't never see us actually dog them or anything like that. If anything, I was trying to be supportive. Right. You know, because that's what we my, should be doing. Right. Try to put myself in their shoes and just like, you know, I hope y'all work through it. Whatever, whatever, whatever. So. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, uh, 
if y'all have any other questions. I did not come here to bash anybody. Um, I see some of y'all are asking about, you know, other people and they, been, I'm not, I'm not here to do no, that. Man, that is, uh, I just came here because I felt as though y'all needed to hear what we had to say about it and the reasons why we did not even want to discuss it because it's just disgusting. Yeah, we want to tell our story because obviously people are speaking out and saying certain things and, you know, putting my kid's name out there, whether they was trying to be, in, you know, dog us or not you know, dealing with that whole thing or dog my baby or whatever. But at the end of the day, we want to tell our story of what really went down and really what happened. Mm -hmm. And all of these chicks know that it's a bunch of made up bullshit. And literally they hate my wife so much that they will run with this story just to damage our family. And it's not cool when I only wish the best for all of their families. Mm -hmm. When I know a bunch of fucked up stuff about a lot of them. Mm -hmm. All right. So don't get me to talking. Some of these women need to shut up. You could take that to the bank. Because mm. ain't, ain't none of y'all beat me. I'm just going to keep it <laughs> Well, look. Yes. Buy Drag Queens on iTunes and every other major outlet that you love to get your music. It's available everywhere. Spotify and all that good stuff. And check it out on my YouTube channel, Tea with Monique. And if y'all have any babies and you need to potty train them, buy my book. <laughs> Shop.notforlazymoms.com and um or just not for lazy moms.com follow us on instagram might as well go ahead and put all my little business plugs out there right now because a chick be working y'all like i have jobs and jobs and jobs and i enjoy them so um chris is drinking the wine i had the other night the uh, okay. bernhard it's like an organic red wine somebody said the gag is t'challa left the house to go and find them broads and peck them. <laughs> Monique and Portia fan page. That is funny. <coughs> Are you officially going to homeschool your kids? Um, Yeah, they'll be getting homeschooled, y'all. Yes, they'll be getting homeschooled. Make sure y'all visit uh, Freeish Media on YouTube and on Instagram. We did a really good interview the other day, and it's posted on their YouTube channel, Freeish Media. And um, I posted a swipe up link in my stories. If y'all want to check it out, they have a podcast. So it was a podcast and we had a visual on uh, YouTube. And uh, I love y'all got to follow that page. Somebody like, said the wine ass. not helping Chris. No, this is me being real. I've been hot all day. Yeah, no, he's been pissed off all day. I just started my wine. I've been hot all day. <laughs> Put my little baby's name in, in their mouth and, and trying to plot to destroy my family. I don't play with that because I would never do that to y'all. Pissed. Pissed. I was watching. I watched uh, DJ Richie Sky's YouTube, and that's how I saw the videos that he posted that were from her live. And then people kept text, not texting. Well, people were texting me. I have like a, over a hundred text messages in my phone right now that I still need to open up. Uh, people were texting me, DMing me, messaging me on Twitter, tagging me, and I'm just like, "What is going on? Crazy." Do, does the website have the essential oils you use? I actually, I'm developing my own essential oils line. Uh, it's called Mila Eve Essentials. And um, that's going to be, you'll see the link to get to that website on notforleasemoms.com. Um, my labels that I have worked, I've been working hard, y'all. Uh, the labels and the packaging is, uh, the labels are done. So I'm getting all of the oil bottles filled up, got the labels ready. And the packaging is on its way. So as soon as I get everything, do my little promo pictures and get the website completely done once I put the uh, photos in, then I'm going to be launching that as well. So I have made good use of this uh, quarantine time to finish up a lot of projects that I had been working on that, you know, just didn't have time to uh, to focus on. So well, I just saw somebody talking about we need to talk about somebody's kids. We're not going to do that. Oh, no. No, them babies don't deserve it. You know, at the I'm end of the gonna, day. I'm not going to. They're innocent. We all, as grown-ups, made the choice to be on this show, and we should not dog their babies. Right. And we're not going to do that. Right. Yes. Make sure y'all follow the Black Socialites. Make sure y'all follow Freeish, Queens of RHOP, Candy Burst fan page. There's a lot of great, great blogging pages and fan pages out there, and I try my best to support all of them. Because without y'all, 
we would not be relevant. <laughs> Y'all keep people talking. So I appreciate all of the bloggers and all the supporters of the show, whether you like me or not, you know, I, I'm just always down for the show, if y'all can't tell that by now. So, um, so yeah, make sure y'all follow all of these Bravo Stand accounts. <laughs> and um, I think that is it. I'm tired. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't slept because of T'Challa being gone. And um, yeah, so I'm really tired. <laughs> and I had to wait up to 10 o'clock because Cookie called and informed me that the Green Leaf finale series finale was at nine and she demanded that i not go live until 10 <laughs> so that the people can watch green leaf <laughs> and i obliged um so yeah i hope y'all have a great night um i'm gonna post this live to my page so comment and let me know if y'all have any other questions. <laughs> That's about it. All right, y'all take care and y'all have a blessed night. And we are going to be safe out here in these Potomac streets. <laughs> oh, me and Karen are going live tomorrow at nine o'clock. So we'll see y'all then. Peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs>